Hello, my name is Juan Rodriguez and I'm a collaboration technical marketing engineer here at Cisco. And today I want to give you a quick introduction to the WebEx app with all the recommended workloads enabled. One of the first decisions that you guys have to make when looking at the WebEx app is the settings that you want to apply. One of them is the appearances. Do you want to work in dark or light mode? There's a lot of options for you to choose. Another setting that you want to take a look at is your landing screen. This setting right here will let you choose what workload you see when you first open the WebEx app. By default, you go to messaging, but you can easily change that to something else. If you go from top to bottom, you'll see that there's different settings that you can choose. With audio, you can select which speaker and microphone you're choosing, and you can have the noise removal, which is great for working from home. Another setting that's great for working from home is the virtual background. You can also enable that here. Another setting you might wanna take a look at is your profile picture. This way people can identify you just by taking a look at where you are and change that here and edit your own profile. You can update the picture to whatever you want. And a way to know if people are busy or not is by looking at their status. As you can see here, Colby is on a phone call. I'm on a do not disturb. Kylie is on presenting on a meeting or on a call. And Judah is on a meeting. This way you can tell what status each person is in before contacting them and knowing if they're available like Colby is right now to actually take your message or your call. With that prep work done, you're ready to start using the app. In the left hand columns, you'll see all the workflows from messaging, calling and meetings. Let's start by reviewing the meetings workflow. In the meetings workflow, you'll see the options to start a meeting, join a meeting and schedule a meeting. You will also see all your calendar information for that day. If you wish to see more information regarding a meeting, you can just simply click on it and see who's attending, what the agenda is, and more meeting information just by clicking on the, on the dropdown. Let's go ahead and join this meeting now. Once you click start or join a meeting, you'll see the preview page. On this preview page, you'll have the options for audio, which include noise removal, which is very recommended. And you'll have the option to change your background if you wish to as well. You also have the option to connect to a video system if you would like to. Let's go ahead and actually start this meeting. Once you start the meeting, you'll have the full power of WebEx in your hands with closed caption, WebEx assistant, translation if you have a subscription for it, and everything else. Let's go ahead and take a look at what WebEx can do for you. Once you have all your users in your meeting, you can go ahead and check out the participants tab and see who's actually in the meeting. You can also change the layout if you would like. You could put people on stage and bring more people in and take some people out. You can also see people inside right from the meeting to see exactly who's talking and what positions they have. You can start a recording from here. You can send reactions all directly from your WebEx app. Once you're done with the meeting, just go ahead and end it. To see your recordings later on, just click on recordings and your recordings will be there. Let's go ahead and show you how to schedule a meeting. The first thing you got to take a look at is that your preferences are set to either Outlook or in the WebEx app. As you can see here, I have it set to the WebEx scheduler, meaning that my meetings are going to be scheduled within the WebEx app. Again, I can have it cross launch to Microsoft Outlook if I wish to. Once I click a schedule a meeting, I have the option to put a name, the time, add people, put a description, use my personal meeting or create a one-time meeting and just hit schedule. Once the meeting is scheduled, you'll see it come on in my calendar in the WebEx app. I can do everything directly from here. Let's go ahead and now talk about messaging. 
in the messaging workflow, if you are having a meeting, you won't miss it because you will see it here as well. Also here you have the option to filter and you can filter on, on red, favorite, mentions. You can change the appearance as well to separate the personal spaces to the group spaces. You can put the favorites on top and you can have a compact view. Inside the messaging workflow, you'll have messaging, people, content, scheduling, and then anything embedded that you want to embed into the WebEx app. You'll be able to do threading, you'll be able to do GIFs, you'll be able to do emojis, mentions, and even add your personal room into a space directly from here. These are just some of the options that you have already in the messaging workflow in the WebEx app. Now I want to go ahead and talk about calling. By default, in the WebEx app, any WebEx app user can call for free any other WebEx app user. How that works is you look up at the user that you're trying to talk to, you click on the call, and then you choose call on WebEx. With this feature, I can go ahead and start a call directly to this person. If I go ahead and accept that call, a call will be established immediately. And we can go ahead and invite new people. And if I decide to go ahead and add anybody else to this call, I can go ahead and actually escalate it to a WebEx meeting. This call has been escalated from a regular call to a WebEx meeting. You can also integrate the WebEx app with various call engines, including UCM and WebEx calling. That would give the user PSTN access to call to PSTN numbers. These are just some of the flexibilities that we have now available with the WebEx app.